As mentioned earlier, this sketch was really just a guide to see where things were approximately likely to end up. And what I really like about this is that it's uh, a pretty good proof of how things do change from what you thought was going to happen when you sketch them to what actually happens when you try and model them. So again, I've been working with this little sort of maquette of where I want things to be approximately. And then, um, as shown in the sort of time lapse video, uh, basically looking for the right fit in my hand. And that's kind of the emphasis is about my hand. This isn't creating a 95th percentile uh, across the world usability thing. So, you know, as an exercise, it's useful just to make sure that you're happy with something before you start tailoring it to others. So, <clears throat> to explain the, the various scribbles on this, hopefully they'll they'll come out reasonably clear. But what we've got is essentially the blue lines here are position of my hand, and I felt that that was where I was going to click, so I coloured those in black to where I felt I wanted the mouse buttons to be. I then looked at where I was able to sort of comfortably reach to switch it on and off. Now it's not super comfortable, but it's comfortable enough that I would do it once for you know a long period of time. And then what was interesting was, although with the sketch, I thought that I would have the DPI button somewhere back there, that was actually getting too uncomfortable. So what I found was a nice thing, is that the actual reach of my thumb was far more convenient. And in many ways, it's kind of a bit like a joystick button, that that was the natural place for me to press the DPI. So given that I might change it more than, you know, uh, than, I, than I might think when I've got that functionality in an easy accessible place, I might end up appreciating that quite a bit. And then lastly, obviously the uh, the scroll button. So I've got the natural position and then I've got a lower and upper comfort zone of what I think is my sort of optimal scrolling region. So obviously not forgetting details like making sure that the base fits in the bottom. Uh, it is going to be pretty tight, uh, such as the thickness of the styrofoam that I've got, but it should do quite nicely. Now the final thing is the sort of the, the little decadent bit in that given that these line themselves up rather nicely I kind of felt that I was allowed to have a little bit of artistic license to essentially put a sort of uh, if you like a sort of visual flow line of where I think the aesthetic should be allowed to go and I stress allowed to go as opposed to just putting it necessarily where I think is a purely aesthetic choice. Um, Debates will rage on form and function for many years, I'm sure, but for me, this is about the sort of level where I feel I can say it's a sort of a genuine aesthetic based on some sort of functionality. And again, I think if I can bring out this form and also this form uh, reasonably successfully, I'll be very pleased with that. The final thing is that how are we going to get all of that in there? Well, the simplest thing is to break it in half. And so, for me, I've basically taken a dotted line here, which should be pretty close to me cutting in half about there. And this is really just a choice which will be individual to you, depending on how your design goes. Um, and I've tried to sort of anticipate a little bit how big components will be and where they'll go. And I've basically gone just between the switch and the, uh, the mouse click button, and then all the way through to the back. And I've kept that in, in that particular line, as I think even if there is some sort of distortion, it'll be the most uh, easy to conceal in the, in the model. Famous last words, but I hope that's how it's going to go. So there we go.